All right, so I decided to break this out into two videos. Um, I know some of you are going to want to watch just the machining part of it. So let's take a look at the machining process for uh, for this fixture. Now, I didn't record everything. Um, I didn't record any of the bottom side operations. I didn't record um, my spotting and drilling uh, operations in here. But uh, I think you guys get the point. So that what I did um, <coughs> in the cam, I actually decided to try the 3D adaptive uh, strategy because, frankly, I was you know playing around with all kinds of things, and I was like, you know what, let's just try this. And in one fell swoop, I was able to get all of the roughing done. Um, I was I was really surprised. It, it worked out very well. So I'm just using a uh, it's an Imco uh, three eighths end mill, three flute end mill. I'm running at 10,000 RPM, and I want to say I was running at uh, 56 inches a minute, if I remember right, 60 inches a minute. Um, but I'll have to go back and, and look at that. So the first thing it's doing is it you know roughed out one of the slots, then it's roughing out the the uh, pocket where it's going to uh, have the machinable pit bulls and it goes in and does what it can for the handle. Uh, some of this can't get roughed in with the 3 8 so I need to switch to a, a quarter inch end mill and I do that later. So let's just sit back and enjoy the show for a little bit. I'll come back in when I've got something more to say. Uh, you know, while we're here, let's talk about something, and you'll see this pop up quite a bit. You'll see the, the action stop uh, a lot, and this angle you can kind of see it even better. You see all those chips back there? Um, I'm actually running into issues with uh, chip compaction, so uh, especially as I'm doing a lot of these, uh, or these longer operations. Um, I guess you can't really see it so much from this angle, but the, uh, the chips end up on the y-axis, the, the rear side of the y-axis weight covers and um, they end up packing over time. You see I've got nice small chips here, but uh, they, they end up building up, and then it impedes in the motion that I'm having, and it's actually 
I uh, gotten to a point where it has uh, destroyed my y-axis uh, way cover back there and um, it would throw an error right it was it would lose its position throw an error thankfully in this case it was throwing an error and um, like right here right? So I had to clean everything out. I had to clean out the way covers and, and start over again. And that happened uh, every few minutes once I hit this point. Um, so I'd love, if you guys have some feedback, uh, I'd love to hear uh, ways that you're handling it. Now, I've already changed the way the, um, the direction that the stream of uh, coolant is flowing. So uh, uh, it's you know, hopefully not blowing right back onto it. As you can see though, I'm doing slotting. And so there's just a lot of chips that are gonna, it's only got one place to go, forward or backwards, right? And so um, this is something that I've noticed kind of as a problem. I've had the 440 for about a year and I've had this problem uh, over the past year quite a bit. And so I'd love feedback from you guys. Um, frankly, I'm even considering changing the way covers out to solid, uh, solid covers or something along those lines. But if you've got some feedback, please let me know. All right, <clears throat> at this point, uh, clean it up a little bit and switching over to the quarter inch end mill to get in there a little bit better. So you see, um, I needed to open those uh, pin uh, locations up, uh, fix the uh, counter bore for the bolt. And then uh, the first thing I do is I do a roughing operation to get in a little better uh, where the 3 8 end mill couldn't get. So uh, I did um, Mickey Mouse ears on these corners um, to uh, make sure that there's clearance for the, the clamp. There's you know, a lot of little things, but again, as we're doing this, you know, sometimes with the uh, radius, you've got to think about you know, what size cutters do you have available to you. you know, when I did the design, I specifically made sure that the quarter inch cutter could get in. I think I want to say I did a uh, minimum radius of a three eighths, or no, I'm sorry, 300, uh, 300 thousandths. So the, the quarter inch could get in there and, and do it what we needed to do. So at this point it's basically just sit back and let it run. Um, and that's what I, I liked most about doing it this way was I, um, in using that 3D adaptive, I did restrict it to just a certain area, but the 3D adaptive was nice. I could just basically put in one tool and walk away for 10 minutes and let it do its thing. Um, it's, uh, if I didn't say this before, all of this is uh, recorded at, or is being played back at four, uh, four times speed. Um, so it does look like it's moving a little fast, but uh, that's because it is uh, definitely moving um, faster than, than real time. Uh, not that it was moving slowly, but again, I had things dialed down a little bit so I could, you know, click and walk away from it. Um, now, obviously, there were some mistakes made, but uh, we talked about that in the other video. All right, so last part here was just our contour ops, you know, clean everything up, make sure that we're, we're ready to go, and again, I played it very conservative on this so I could just click the button and walk away and, and worry about other things. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't babysitting this at all. Um, the only issues that I really ran into was, you know, the issues with the, the chip compaction. Right? You can kind of see on that backside where the way cover has just, it's gotten destroyed now. That accordion cover is not working. Um, it's broken at this point. I've got to replace that and the Z, you can see the Z cover sagging as well. So both of those need to get uh, replaced. Um, once these uh, contours were done, 
came in, did the contours for the actual handle itself, and then uh, that's what we're doing here. We're cleaning up the, the handle locations. And then we are ready to get it deburred. All right, deburring, quarter inch, uh, 90 degree, two fluted, Lakeshore carbide end mill, 10,000 RPM, 50 inches a minute. Uh, I was doing a uh, 20 thousandths deburr on this, so 20 thousandths chamfer. And I tell you what, even at 50 inches a minute, it's beautiful. I, really, I could run it probably closer to 100 inches a minute uh, if I wanted to. The one thing you can see, again, you know, going back to some of those mistakes I made, is I missed couple of the uh, the holes to get chamfered. I went back and did that afterwards, and because my heights weren't right when I did that afterwards, I got messed up chamfers. Right? So, yeah, lots of things, but this is the final uh, view. Thanks for watching.